Welcome back, it is Thursday, and that means acting analysis for animators, and today I'm gonna to take a look at season three of Stranger Things. Since I'm looking at the whole season, I'm gonna break up this whole thing into three parts. And today's gonna to be part one, obviously, and I'm gonna break this up into episode one, two, and three. Let's get to it. All right, and in this one, it's not so much an acting thing, but it's more about introducing your characters. And as you probably have seen, if you've seen some of my clips here, I'm a big fan of camera moves, introducing characters, and potentially showing off different things in terms of animation. So what I like about this, just from a principal point of view, you could show off a walk. That's my character walking. <laughs> I don't know what this is. But like this character, so you could have, and this could be anything, right? This could be a run. This could be a run into, maybe this is a castle wall or something, and you have some action, there's some flying creatures. I mean, you can escalate this as always and go crazy, but you can show off full body. This could be someone standing, waving, like, come on, come on, like whatever you wanna do, but it's full body. And then the camera pans over, and then you can introduce a more close up, half, you know, waist up type of stuff, all the way down to close up and you can do facial stuff. So imagine this, you would change the setting. Again, this could be knights, they could be soldiers, whatever. They could be running. And then as they come in, they could be in here. And then you have your lip sync where they're huffing and puffing. They're here, they're here. And then you got your general or whatever going, all right, or whatever you want to do. Or this could be kids. This could be kids on the playground. Maybe they hire up or something and they have water balloons and they run and like, Jimmy, Jimmy, they're coming, they're coming. And then you got the little kid that's older, Probably not smoking, but he could have some chocolate or something and you can just change his whole thing into kids. This is so silly. But I think this could be really cool. And you can go further and copy this. I mean, don't copy, but you know, as an <clears throat> inspiration, quote unquote, and turns around and then there's something else. So maybe, you know, you got that one kid and then it turns around and then there's another kid that has crazier hair, Rufio style, comes in and all right, we do we have all the water balloons? Yes, let's go and fight. But anyway, this could be a cool uh, combination of full body, half, close up, and then you can go further and then show again more full body with a with different interesting character walk that then ends up close up into something else that's facially driven. I think this is super cool, this interesting camera move. The staging leads to all kinds of possibilities of showing off multiple things in one shot. And in this one, I'm gonna combine a couple things in terms of prop and character introduction and camera. I'm always a big fan of stuff like this. Right, so you have an empty thing, and imagine this could be the beginning of your reel. You got your title credits and the fade out, the set fades in, you're wondering what's gonna happen. Ba -ba -ba! And that could be an interesting prop. I mean, this already makes it interesting and funny. Uh, this could be all kinds of stuff. This could be a hand holding like a plushy teddy bear, wiggling and then whatever we want to do with it. That could be interesting. Why, why is there a hand holding a teddy bear? I mean, the prop itself could be cutely animated. And then again, it sparks the interest. And then the character comes in. I mean, that could be an interesting intro to a shot. Then you have all of this. I'm going to fast forward or fast scrub. But then it's back to this where he continues, again, somewhat full body, not quite, but you can show off a walk or whatever mechanics you have here that then leads to this. I'm just a big fan of this because then you can combine multiple things. As I said before, you have different things in terms of body mechanics. You can you don't have to show just one thing and combine that into facial stuff. And interesting too, where it's kind of a, I'm leading into the next, into the next, into the next. Now this might be too long for you. You might not want to do all of this, but I think it's an interesting opportunity to, again, to show off multiple things uh, and going back to this with the character introduction here. And speaking of character introduction, this one's a bit, I wouldn't say overused, but it's very common, but still it could be funny. And I've actually seen some of my students do this where it's you're inside a, a, a fridge, fridge opens and it shows your character. Why am I showing this? Because it's, you know, it's been used a lot. It still offers opportunity to do interesting wiggly stuff with the props, whatever you have in here. And then that can be all kinds of stuff where the character comes in, they're bored, they're really hungry, they're, they're looking for something that's not something that's supposed to be in the fridge. Maybe they're glasses or car keys that are now frozen or like whatever, I mean, not that the fridge would freeze things, but anything that contrast of whatever object that's not supposed to be in the fridge. And then the reaction of the character seeing like, ah, oh, that's where I put it. I mean, that could be interesting. And then you can close it like that and then that's your shot. So I don't know, could be food for thought. Ha <laughs> ha, food for thought. I didn't realize that, I'm sorry. Anyway, next up is this sequence, and I thought that was interesting in terms of pantomime. So Hopper has a hard time communicating uh, certain feelings and ideas to uh, the kids. What I like about this is that 
I mean, there are some grunts and he says some things, but imagine even there's no sound and you have this. And there's already, the, hmm, how am I gonna say this? You can already, that's already, you know, a lot of uh, potential for interesting pantomime. And then you have this. I'm always a big fan of characters reacting to something. So that, and it, it could be with one or two characters. And you have a little bit, I mean, he says something, so it's up to you to potentially find lip sync where there are just small separate words. It could just be grunting and noises. Um, you know, and then you can have things where it's a bit more subtle. Like, huh? What is he saying? So this goes on for a bit longer. I wouldn't make a shot that's that long if it's on your demo reel, um, just because it's kind of always kind of the same. But I thought as an idea it could be interesting where a character is trying to say something to other people and you got that somewhat pantomime, maybe lip sync, depending on what you have. And then you got the opportunity of characters reacting in a funny way or whatever way you want to do it, dramatic or sad uh, to this whole thing. Of course, here the lip sync continues and they actually have stuff to do and, <laughs> and then he has his reaction. But anyway, I thought again, as a shot idea, it could be interesting. Now, speaking of reaction, I'm a big fan of these guys. And what I love about this is that they have their intro, like they find each other, they're happy, hey, you're back. And then she asks him, so how many other children do you know? And I love his reaction here of, see? It's almost like, see what I have to deal with? But what I love about this is, and I mentioned that before, is that this is technically your lip sync. So it doesn't have to be just a shot for your lip sync, right? So you can have something a bit longer, and this could be whatever you want to do in terms of what are they doing that prompts this reaction and this lip sync and this, this content of the audio. But again, it doesn't have to be done. You don't have to end the shot like this. You can add a little button, you do one more thing with a funny, uh, I mean, this could be, look, this is your gear change in a way, right? There's a bit of emotional change there. And then a funny ending and then you cut. Love that character. And again, speaking of reaction, he tells him about Susie, where they don't quite believe that's his girlfriend. What I love about this is that here, he goes, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> and it's again, it's the audio says one thing, right? But his performance says something else, a different subtext here. And that's something else to think about where you do have your lip sync, but maybe it's right after. It doesn't have to be a longer extra button after your lip sync, like what I said before in the previous example. It's something that's pretty much part of the shot. But think about how can you change something? Can you say something lip sync wise, but then his actual reaction, the subtext is totally different and reveals what the character really thinks. And it's not much what he does. It's just to look over and then, <laughs> but it's so good. It's so good, I love it. It's just, just small enough to give this a different meaning there. In this one, I wanna talk about hand gestures. In animation, it's very, very common for people to and I'm guilty of that as well, to have one or even two hand gestures, and then you're in that dreaded W pose, and it gets all twinned and mirrored, and all that stuff. What I like about this is that he actually, he starts with this, right? He says five times. It's not like you really want to act out words. It gets a bit too on the nose, and I don't know, there's always a time and place for it, but I've tried to avoid it. But in this case, what's interesting is that he says it, he acts out the words five times, he has that, but he holds, he holds that, and why? Because then he can use this to change into this. I love that. I love that this is almost a really long anticipation into that, into a bigger thing. And this almost becomes a prop where he looks at it. He goes, oh, and I came back and I regained her trust and everything. And he still holds it, right? He still has that. It's almost like he's now holding a prop. This is now part of his story. And that's why it's okay, to me at least to do this, to act out your words, because what he does with it, this part is really interesting to me. Next up is this, and it's all about head accents. And the very common thing in lip sync is to just actually do the lip sync, but not influence the head by any jaw movement, the attitude, or even body stuff, or it's pretend you do lip sync and you realize, hmm, I gotta do something bigger with the jaw, but because of that jaw, it, it affects the head and the head will move, but if the head moves, it affects the rest of the body and so on. This is something that's very common that students overlook, mainly because one of the common things to teach is to say, well, the body has to work, the poses have to work, the lip sync is icing on the cake. It has to work with it without lip sync, which is true. But the thing is, once you add lip sync, you have to make sure that it doesn't feel just copy pasted. It has to influence the rest in my weirdly useless arrows. Now, why am I showing this? So if you listen to this. No donkey. So good. And you can have a contrast of actually not a lot of movement and it's all in the head. But this is a good example of how much you can push the head as well, if you add those accents, 
for something a bit more interesting. <laughs> I like how she just she just keeps staring at the character. It's awesome. But again, don't forget that if you do lip sync, think about well, at what point can I really exaggerate the head? When is it appropriate? And if I exaggerate the head, maybe don't exaggerate the the body with it because then it makes it too much. And now this contrast is more interesting because it's just the head and not the body. And last clip here is Elle coming in and turning on the light and she's in a room she hasn't been before. Why am I showing you this? This is one of the common things that I like to teach uh, in the kind of environment lecture that I have, which actually I've done on this channel as well, is that if you're entering a room and you've been here before, like with her, maybe she hasn't been in this room that much with her brother, maybe it's kind of off limits. But anyway, if you know your room, you're gonna behave differently than if you're entering a room that you've never been in. So this to me makes sense. Now you might argue she comes in and she might know that this switch on the left, it's been convenient that she knows. At the same time, the switch will be on the right because you can't reach it. It kind of makes sense that switches are on the left at this point. But again, she has to look and she looks and then turn, turns um, switches the light on. This to me again makes sense because she has never been there. Imagine you're going in because you're looking for something, you would do the same thing, but I would never look screen left, uh, screen right, I would look screen left because the character knows the room. You just walk in and this is just kind of a, a habits gesture as you go in and turn on the lights. There we go. Episode one, two and three of season three. I'm gonna have part two and three, obviously if you haven't gone this far or you maybe not at all, this is all spoiler material. So watch out for the next couple of chapters where I'm gonna go until the very last episode, spoiling visually all kinds of things. But that is it. If you have seen this episode and you feel like there's more, obviously my comments are open, let me know. You know the usual spiel, like and subscribe if you want to. I post almost every day, so subscribe and hit that bell button to get all the notifications if you want all the notifications. If you're still watching this, of course, Thank you and for your patience and for watching this. If you feel like any of this is helpful and you want to apply this to your own shots and you want to work with me on your own shots, I have workshops, link in the description with all the details. My workshops are always open for signups. So email me, let me know if you want to sign up for my workshops. And that is it. I will see you tomorrow. And I'll see you next week if you choose to do so. Yeah, if you choose to do so. Yeah, if you choose to watch again. All right, well, thank you. <laughs>